Yeah, what can you give it that's less than an infinite number of states? You could give it a, like a little data structure to work with. If you gave it an array, Turing machine. If you give it a stack, not a Turing machine. If you give it two stacks, yes, a Turing machine. It's a really neat hierarchy. This is all news to me. It's all news. I'm just telling you right now. Okay. <laughs> What's the big deal between one stack and two stacks? Well, you can do a lot more with two stacks than with one stack. <laughs> 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 this is the big picture. We're not going to talk too much about the details. All right, but I want to get back to this. So this doesn't work. I want to convince you this will never work. I'm going to convince you that if uh, that if you know if 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 Chris Walker goes home tonight, as is his habit, and and he and he spends all night coming up with a finite state machine for zero to the n, one to the n. And he calls up all his friends from class, and he gets all the advice he can. And finally, about 4 in the morning, he gets it, and he's positive. He's unaware that he's just completely deluded because he's tired, and he just doesn't remember. And he comes into class, and he's ready, and he says, I got it. Here's my machine. I'm ready. Uh, it's wrong, what you said. All right? And I go, OK. So now we're going to have a dialogue. And Chris is a good-natured fellow. So we're going we're gonna to have this dialogue right now. So my question to you is, how many states are there in your machine? Just give me a number. It doesn't matter. 24. 24. Okay. So Chris says there's 24 states in his machine. Right? So now I say to Chris, OK, Chris, do me a big favor and take this string, 0 to the 24th, 1 to the 24th, and run it through on your machine for me. Okay? And now, and I push him a little further. I say, you would admit that since there's 24 zeros here, that somewhere in those first 24 symbols, you're going to have to hit a same state twice. Because right? you start in your initial state, and you move along on zeros, moving from one state to another. And if you keep going to new states, you only got 23 moves you know, before the end. So sooner or later, somewhere, you're going to have to hit a state twice. You agree, right? Yeah. And, and I nailed you down, because I asked you how many states were in your machine before. And then I picked this. That's really important in this dialogue. <laughs> if I gave you the string before, you'd say it's got 80 states in it. Yeah. And I'd I <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then I'm changing this. That's the key. Chris has to tell me first, because he said he's finished. And now I give him a string to try out in his machine. And I tell him, look, I know there's going to be a loop somewhere in this machine. Tell me the first state that gets entered twice. And uh, tell me specifically how many zeros got read before that loop, how many zeros are in the loop, and then how many zeros and ones after the loop. So you can split it up any way you want. I don't care. Say it was 17 zeros before the loop, and say there were three zeros in the loop, and then the rest of the string happens after the loop. Okay, there's got to be a loop somewhere. The, the loop could be just one zero, but I just picked this at random. You should actually pick so that's this. That's a good guess. That's exactly how right. <laughs> Very kind. Okay, so what's left over? Zero to the fourth, one to the 24th. Right. So let's, and this is the loop. This is the part before the loop, and this is the part after the loop. There's three parts to this computation on the string. The part before the loop, the loop itself, and the part after the loop. And now, now that you've admitted to me this, I'm going to say, OK, well now try this. Try 0 to the 17th, 0 to the 3, 0 to the 3, 0 to the 4, 1 to the 24. What's your machine going to do? It's going to do the same thing it did before on the first 17 symbols. Then it's going to loop on the next three, just like it did before. And then it sees the exact same symbols again. So what's it going to be? Where's it going to be when it's done with these three symbols? The same place it was when it was done with these. It just loops. It's just going to take that loop twice. And now it continues. So if this ended up in a final state in your machine, then so is this going to end up in a final state in your machine. Right? Because they both continue from the same spot after here. They both hit that loop and then continue on. What's wrong with that? Well, you're supposed to make a machine that accepts things that have equal zeros and equal ones. You started out with 0 to the 24th, 1 to the 24th. And now I've convinced you, without looking at your machine, that your machine has to accept 0 to the 27, 1 to the 24th. So your machine's bogus. 
Not because it doesn't accept all the 0 to the n, 1 to the n, but it, because it accepts more than it's supposed to. So that's why I did this now, because of your question. The argument here forces somebody to come with a hypothetical machine, and then in a dialogue, forces them to admit, oh, gee, I may have gotten all the strings you want, but unfortunately, you seem to have convinced me that I'm getting more than I really want. And this idea is the heart, we'll do a whole lecture on this with a lot of examples, but this is the heart of something called the pumping lemma. And it's called the pumping lemma because you're pumping up this loop. Regular sets are called regular because if you have a regular set, you can always pump it up at regular intervals and get other things in the set. They string out at very linear intervals. That's why anything that grows fa faster than linear is never regular. Zero to a square number, that's definitely not regular. Because regular sets, you can pump out at linear intervals. And squares are not linear. Zero to the anything that's not linear won't be regular. So that gives you another way of thinking about regular sets. They are linear in some way. They are very, very regular. And that's why they're called regular. All right. So that gives you a couple big picture things that are coming up. We'll do this conversion of deterministic to regular expressions and from regular expressions to non-deterministic next time. And we will start on the pumping lemma and showing things are not regular the time after that. We're going to try to finish this whole level of finite state machines in another two to three lectures. You should think of this course as being basically a week on finite state machine level, a week on the context-free grammar level, a week on the Turing machine level, and then a week at the higher level of complexity theory and decidability. Okay, let's quit for today.